We're nearly there. Only a little farther. Thank God. Man, you guys are dragging this the fuck out. Seriously. Of course there's no save point. So you followed me here. You are stubborn. And I admire you for that. But you should never have come. I have restored the Archons to life. Just as I promised. You call them Archons? Their fire is cold and dark. Nothing like the other Archons I've met. No, they are not as they were. But they are bound to me. And they will follow my word. The Archons are not all that has returned. The power of creation still lives in this grove. And anything can be born anew. Even the Creator Gods themselves. One of her mother's gods. She's called it back to life. Oh great, now we gotta fight a big monster. Man, this game is jump the shark. Look at this shit. The fuck?
me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. What the fuck was that shit? Voices of my mother's gods. I cannot hear them anymore. Not even a whisper. They are lost. You will not see them or hear them ever again. You lie, child. Or whatever you truly are behind that innocent face. No, Jane Cassinder. I speak the truth. What remained of your mother's gods has been destroyed. And the power of creation has fled this grove. It will never return. You told me that this forest grew from a seed of the first creation. 
Is it dead then? That cannot be. My mother searched for thousands of years, and this was the only remnant of her gods that she ever found. The power in this forest might have been used to restore the old gods and all their servants to life. Not the twisted half-life that you gave them, Jane Cassander. A true rebirth, as they were at the dawn of the world. But you called upon that power to destroy, not to create. You twisted the power of creation to your own ends, until all that was left was an empty shell, rotted from within. And now, it is gone. And the Archons I fought in the forest, the ones that Jane restored to life? Dead, wilted like blossoms, and scattered to the wind. When you slew the reborn god, all Jane's creations were undone. In time, the forest will recover. But it will be ordinary, no longer the Morn wield with the power of creation at its heart. Why did this power respond to Jane and no one else? Jane's mother was first sister. When she died, her fire passed to Jane. The first sister stood at the right hand of her gods. Only pale shadows of their minds persisted in this grove. But they remembered her. That is why Jane saw her gods in visions and dreams, just as her mother did before her. And that is why Jane could unlock the power that was buried here. The forest was already corrupted, even before Jane tried to call the Archons back to life. The first time Jane called on the power of the old gods, it was to murder Hugh Montbaron, 30 years ago. She knew she was misusing that power, but she was too full of anger, and she didn't care. After that, the Mornwield grew rotten and sick. All its potential for good was lost. So she came back, and made the same mistake a second time. Yes, driven by anger again. So the Archons that she called back to life were nothing but monsters. It was the same for the Creator God. The creature that you fought was shaped by Jane's fury and guilt. Guilt? Yes, Jane Cassander. You can hide your remorse from yourself, but you cannot hide it from me. We have a decision to make. What to do with Jane? Wait. I have a question. And I may never be able to ask it again. I was born in this grove 30 years ago. Was I not? Yes. I found you here. On the day the Legion died. And I carried you to the forest's edge. So the Creator Gods. Whatever remained of them. They called me back to life. That may be... yes. If that's true, it must have happened quickly, soon after Jane destroyed the Legion, but before the forest became corrupt. Perhaps the Creator Gods knew that they were doomed, and they wanted Anjali to destroy them, to undo Jane's mistake. If that is true, then at least I've honored them. Thank you. Your words give me comfort. And Jane? What of her? As long as she lives, Jane is a threat. A sword hanging over our necks. The Legion will never be safe. Not until she is dead. I expect no mercy from the Legion. Do as you like. Um... I keep saying that I'm gonna spare Jane, and she doesn't have the power of the gods behind her. So she's not really that much of a threat. But I don't think we should let her go. I mean, damn, she kept getting away. 
Well, at least you can't just blink out of existence. Hmm. No, you won't die today. I promised Rosalind that I'd spare your life. Little Queen Mouse. I owe my life to that cringing girl. That is a fine irony. Am I to be your prisoner then? Paraded through the streets in a gilded cage. You'll have a fair and public trial. Let the people judge you. The Legion will support them whatever they decide. You are not the Legion I remember. They were arrogant, and justice of any kind was their privilege alone. I accept your judgment of me. Let the war between us end. You are bound by your words, Jane Cassander. The Legion has won, and you will trouble them no more. It's over then. For now, you deserve a rest. But it may be short-lived. We need to build our strength and train more Legionnaires. You will find many willing to join the Legion now. Even a few who might surprise you. And you will need them. Soon. The country is still divided, and the Legion has many old enemies who yet live. But you've shown yourself to be fair as well as strong. Whatever happens, the people of Ebb will stand behind you. You and I started this together. Whatever comes next, I will follow where you lead. We part ways then. I will be watching. And one day, I will see you again. You bid farewell to the Radiant Youth, and he sent you back to our chapter house in Stonebridge, where I awaited your return. In the weeks that followed, news spread of Jane Cassinder's defeat. Her army scattered, giving us time to rest and regroup. Martin Giscard returned safely from the Spire, along with Meister Wolf and the Automaton Army. Only a few weeks later, elections were held in Stonebridge. Meister Wolf, who had been so public in his support of the Legion, almost won the office of the mayor. But he was defeated in the end. Many people had wanted the dapper old gent to hang. They resented the fact that the Legion had spared his life, and they blamed poor Wolf. After the humiliating events in the Foundry, Meister Castle was forced to resign as Guildmaster of Ironmongers. The Cyclopses negotiated a new contract for higher wages, and with the help of Meister Fiddlewick, formed a new workers' union. For the first time in a hundred years, they were permitted to leave the Foundry and spend their newfound wealth in the markets and taverns of Stonebridge. Cyclopses are becoming an increasingly common sight in Stonebridge and many believe that they will eventually take their place as equal citizens of the town. Ashambo du Payen, formerly known as the Dapper Old Gent, proved a valuable addition to the Legion. His knowledge of Legion magic allowed us to retake control of the Sentinels that had long guarded our chapter houses and estates. But the Gent couldn't leave our chapter house without drawing an angry mob. His confinement started to drive him mad. So he returned to his beloved causeways, beneath an endless sky, and he dwells there still. With the reopening of the hero script, pilgrims returned to the Rukenval, and merchants followed. The following winter was harsh, just as Lazar Basili feared. But thanks to the trade from the south, the people of Ravensrill stayed warm and fed. When spring came, many more pilgrims arrived and the town of Ravensrill grew wealthy again. Lazar and his people built a new stone wall around the town and reclaimed their abandoned houses and farmsteads from the forest. It is a happy change of fortune for a long-suffering town. In his last letter to me, Lazar added one other piece of news. Gunderick Manor has a new mistress, a witch called Leona. The manor has become a gathering place for scores of Lascanzi witches. 
many of whom are apparently quite beautiful. The Tsar reports that the young men of Ravensrill have also begun frequenting the manor, much to the irritation of their mothers and wives. Since the local men will not hear any talk of banishing the witches, it appears that Leona and her people have found a new home, which was perhaps what she intended from the start. Queen Rosalind abandoned Glitterdelf, embarking on a tour of all the cities and towns of the West, meeting as many of her subjects as she could. The Queen showed all the energy of youth, and I think she fully expects to reunite the country in a matter of months, not years. Reality may not be so kind as Lord Devonsey has tried to make her understand. In truth, the future of this country depends more upon what we decide. If she doesn't have the Legion behind her, the Queen is only a single voice, well-meaning though she might be. As for Devonsey himself, I think the man was impressed by your decision to spare Jane Cassinder, as the Queen had asked. When he last visited Stonebridge, he spent a great deal of time in our chapter house. I believe he might actually be willing to rejoin our ranks, if we choose to accept him. Rajani and her sisters returned to Stonebridge, quietly and carefully disguised. Jane Cassinder's defeat affected them deeply though not in the way I expected. Their devotion to Jane was replaced by a deep admiration for your companion, Anjali. I think they saw in Anjali the leader they should have followed all along, and they have lately expressed a desire to join our ranks. I maintain my suspicion of any Archon who once followed Jane, but I believe that redemption is not impossible even for them. Jane Cassinder was brought as a prisoner to Stonebridge, and a great public trial was convened to decide her fate. Representatives of all the major factions sat in judgment. Everyone agreed that she was guilty of terrible crimes against Ebb, but her sentence was the cause of great debate. It was Meister Mudgutter, with typical goblin cunning, who devised her punishment. Jane Cassinder was imprisoned in the same mining tunnels where she had trapped the royal court, sealed forever beneath the ground, in the endless dark. An Archon thrives upon fire. Who knows what terrible change she might suffer when she is forever deprived of light. I only know this, the pale, withered hand that emerges from her cell each day to take her plate of food bears little resemblance to the woman who was shut inside. As for the Legion, the rest of our story is yet to be told. We have a nation to reforge, a fellowship to rebuild, and old enemies who would see us destroyed. And we have questions to decide. Who will assume true power in Ebb if the nation is restored? And who will take the mantle of Grand Master? But these matters I leave for another chronicle, and another time. Whatever happens, know that you will not face the future alone. The Legion will stand by you, always. Huh. Finally. Man, the game was okay, but... It dragged on, and the, the fighting system was just kind of blah. I'm sure it would have been more fun with another person, but I played with my kids, and they didn't enjoy it as much either, so... I don't know. It's just so silly. I don't want to say it's a bad game, but on the scale of A to F, I'd give it like a... C plus, you know, um, I started, started getting fatigued with it about one third of the way through, and, uh, it was just good enough to finish, but, um, there was never a time during the game where I felt 
awesome. Or anything like that. So, yeah. Maybe I picked the wrong character or something, but I, I had a problem using the melee character, so I picked the distance lady, and that one seemed to work out a little bit better, and she was cuter, so whatever, but yeah, no. Anyway, well, that's over with. I'm going to play something that that requires a lot more action. See you guys on the next one. Peace.